And so castles made of sand melts into the sea eventually. We're going to start off with a very special guest, Captain Charles Moore. He's the founder of the Al Algalita Marine Research Foundation. He grew up in Long Beach, and his father was an industrial chemist and avid sailor who took his family sailing to remote destinations from Gu Guadalupe Island to Hawaii. He founded Algalita Marine Research Foundation in 1994 and found his true calling in 1997 on his return voyage from a yacht race to Hawaii. Captain Moore veered from the usual sea route and saw an ocean he had never known. His latest 7,500-mile voyage was recently featured in U.S. News and World Report. Welcome to Healthy Planet, Healthy Me, Captain Charles Moore. Please tell us about the Algalita Marine Research Foundation and, and your mission. Well, you know, scientists study the world, uh, basically study it to death, and a lot of times when their papers are published, it's quite obvious that something needs to be done about the information they've developed, but scientists tend to just let it drop and say, well, I told you about it. Well, you know, it's not up to them to do anything about it. So we started a foundation whose goal was to shorten that distance between, you know, what we're learning about the deteriorating environment and doing something about it. So the Algalina Marine Research Foundation basically was started to get involved in the restoration process that we're all going to have to get involved in if we're going to maintain a, a livable planet. What does Algalita mean, please? Well, Algalita is a takeoff on the word algae in Spanish, alga, and our research vessel, Algita, means little kelp plant in Spanish. Okay, so Captain Moore, what did happen in 1997 on your voyage back from Hawaii that, um, uh, that you had never seen prior? Well, we had, were a research vessel. We had actually just sailed in the race to test a new mast configuration and not really, you know, competing as a racing vessel. We were actually a cruising class catamaran. And uh, we decided to cross this vast uh, calm uh, because we had auxiliary power. And so it was during that crossing, it took about a week to cover a 1,000 miles of a very calm part of the ocean, but yet the most remote part of the ocean from land. Uh, we saw evidence of civilization every time we came on deck. And this was alarming. A bottle cap here, a toothbrush there, a shard of plastic here, a piece of plastic bag there. Not covering the ocean, but consistently there, day after day for a solid week for a 1,000 miles. This was a set of alarm bells. And we came back two years later to assess the actual quantity of plastic in this area and found there was six times as much plastic as the naturally occurring zooplankton. And how is that affecting the uh, the marine life? Well, you know, we've fundamentally altered the character of ocean water, and we've done it because uh, profligate waste has been a part of our society for the last 50 years. It's fueled our growth. And this waste, uh, although we thought it was being put somewhere, it was actually being thrown away, and away was the ocean. It's downhill from everywhere. Everything that doesn't make it to a landfill eventually ends up in the ocean. And now it's gotten a material, plastic, which is so persistent that no one knows how long it lasts in the environment. Uh, I guesses are made from 100 years to 500 years to 1,000 years. It's all totally guesswork because these polymers are so tough that no natural agent can break them down into their constituent elements of carbon dioxide and water. It, they're they're non-digestible. They're not biodegradable. So they're accumulating. And this accumulation is going on as we speak uh, from every civilized nation and from remote outposts all over the world. Plastic is entering the ocean in enormous quantities and will be there uh, for all the foreseeable future, it's like what we say is plastic like diamonds, as far as the environment is concerned, lasts forever. What do we know about using the ocean as a, uh, a dump, and is there any oversight? Well, the ocean has been the dump. It, uh, it's been the dump uh, from time immemorial, for, uh, and it has, uh, in general, been able to handle the detritus of civilization because uh, it was biodegradable. Uh, you can throw sewage in the ocean. It may make it toxic to swim in it, but uh, after a certain period of time, uh, the toxins uh, will be consumed by bacteria and it will become part of the ocean environment. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're keeping introducing this plastic, which is accumulating these toxins, and it's persisting 
for millennia. So it's a fundamental change in the ocean system. And plastic is now uh, proliferated to the extent to which uh, it's being consumed by the most numerous fish in the ocean, the lanternfish. It's sort of like the sardine or the anchovy in the deep ocean. And these base of the marine food web, they're just two and a half to five inch long fish. These fish are consuming huge amounts of plastic, tons and tons of plastic. They come to the surface to feed, and all these little particles, because you see what happens is it doesn't stay a cup or a bottle or a bottle cap. It breaks into these little fragments through photo degradation. The sunlight brittle and brittles them, and they crack. And what's being consumed are these millimeter-sized pieces of plastic that these unsuspecting fish think is zooplankton, their natural food, the animal plankton of the ocean. Okay, so so as far the size of this is, um, and I don't know when the statistic, uh, what year it came from, but fifty billion pounds uh, uh, are made in the USA per year of plastic. That would have been about nineteen ninety one. Okay, uh, now we're double that. We're oh. over two. We're over a hundred billion pounds per year. Now. Over a hundred billion pounds yeah. per year of plastic that we're that we're um, making, making in the United States in the, every year. That's two pounds for every pound of body weight of every man, woman, and child in America. America. And and it's mentioned that the, the garbage patch, as it's called, is twice the size of Texas, about a thousand miles from North America near the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, yeah, it's about halfway between San Francisco and Hawaii, and that's sort of like the cemetery. But there's another cemetery off Japan, another western garbage patch. The western Pacific has a garbage patch. The eastern Pacific off our shore has a garbage patch. And then there's a superhighway of debris connecting those two garbage patches. And what we found in our last voyage was that in the middle of that highway, uh, there's more debris than in the garbage patch itself. So it's as if you had a cemetery with, uh, and then a natural disaster, and the line of hearses bringing corpses to the cemetery was bigger than the number of graves in the cemetery. It's our inputs of plastic from China and Asia and the United States are so great that the places where they're going to end up don't even have as much as is on the way there. Okay, so so Captain Moore, it's only been about five years that we've even had an inkling of this uh, problem out at uh, sea, and uh, we certainly um, and and of course the plastic not being biodegradable. Um, what um, in closing here? What is it that we can uh, do? What is it that's being done? I mean, how is government uh, stepping up to the plate or not? I think what we need to do is engage in a worldwide. Uh, consensus that we've got to stop the age of extraction and start the age of reuse. We, we've got to reuse the products. We've got to make things out of chemicals that don't pollute and aren't toxic and are easy to recycle, and we've got to get this whole new paradigm as part of the mindset of industry so that these products don't become waste. It has to be a zero-waste society, and that's the only answer to the problem of pollution in the marine environment. Okay, thank you very much. We are just hearing from Captain Charles Moore, and he's the founder of Algalita Marine Research Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us, and um, keep us posted. We'll talk to you soon, Captain Moore. All right. Um, For our listeners out there, um, stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few seconds. (laughs) 